Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, and it's time for your daily dose of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I appreciate all the continued feedback that has been offered through all these videos. I hope you continue to enjoy them. Uh, I'm going to address some of those things we've talked about uh, throughout this video, but as promised, uh, we're going to go with the uh, probably the most famous of all German battleships, certainly from World War II, and that is the Bismarck. Uh, the Bismarck and her sister ship, ship the Tirpitz, were the two Bismarck-class uh, battleships that were built uh, by the Germans. And as I've said many times before, this is not meant to be an exact replica. It's meant primarily to be a similar ship that has similar armor and weapons as best as I can within in the limits of the game. I've gone with the modern Battleship 1 hull for this. Uh, we do have the... Uh, I did switch over to Metric. Uh, so I've gone with as close an approximation on the metric as I can with these. Uh, according to the specs I've read uh, and kind of looking at pictures of the Bismarck, uh, Bismarck had eight 38 centimeter guns uh, on four separate turrets. So these are uh, 381 millimeters, which I guess would be pretty much 38 centimeters. Uh, I've placed them about where they were. Uh, Bismarck also had 12 uh, 15 centimeter guns. Uh, as I looked at the picture, it looked like they were on uh, four turrets up front and two more toward the rear. Obviously, they were all facing front, which I don't worry myself with too much because they can turn once the battle starts anyway. Uh, and, and turning one doesn't necessarily turn the other. It's just a lot easier to do it this way. Uh, so these are 152 millimeter guns. Bismarck also had uh, six, no, 16 10 and a half centimeter guns. Now, these are 102 millimeter. I couldn't get 16 of them. I could only get... Uh, 10, or uh, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I guess we've actually got more than 16 there, don't we? Um, we only we just need to take one of these out. There we go. Now we've got 16. Okay, perfect. So that, that puts us where we need to be. Uh, armor, uh, 350 millimeter on the front conning tower. The rear conning tower didn't have nearly that much, but nothing I can do about that. Uh, 360 millimeters on the turret. Uh, 320 for the belt and 100 to 120 on the main deck. So we just went with 120 there. Um, 30 knot speed. And that's really about all I worried about. It was uh, 50, 52,600 tons fully loaded on the Tirpitz. A little less than that on the Bismarck. But of course, again, we've got to go much higher to be able to get the length on this and have it look somewhat reasonable. Uh, so that's what we've gone with. Again, just an approximation, not to meant, not meant to be exactly the way Bismarck was. I'm going to drop this turret back just to kind of deal with this weight offset a little bit. That gets us almost even there. And we're going to go into the Destroy a Full Fleet mission. And we can talk a little bit. And please use the comment section so we can talk more about uh, historically what happened with the Bismarck and the Tirpitz. I'm not real familiar with what happened with Tirpitz. I know Tirpitz was sunk late in the war. I uh, know obviously a lot more about the Bismarck, uh, as most of us, I would guess, probably do. Um, I don't know, Tirpitz was not. Uh, well, it did capsize, but it was broken up for scrap between 48 and 57. Um, so Tirpitz was hit by two tall boy bombs from Lancaster bombers in 1944, uh, which capsized the ship. Uh, so we're going up against this full fleet. And it looks like they're back this way. We're going to be the, the Schwaben. So, uh, you know, Bismarck was launched, uh, I believe it was 1940. Uh, so this is before the United States has entered the war, but U.S. is uh, offering a lot of aid to the British to keep them going, to help support them in their kind of lone fight against Hitler on the Western Front. Uh, obviously, Stalin was fighting them in the East by then. But... Um, or, what, or was he? Yeah, I'm trying to get my timelines now. Was that before? Uh, regardless. So Bismarck was completed in September 1940. Commissioned in August. Uh, sunk in May of 1941. So that's, that's pretty early in the war still. Um, but yeah, the British were fighting alone in the West. And... The U.S. is sending a lot of shipping, uh, and so the, the Germans want Bismarck to 
get out into the break out into the Atlantic and disrupt shipping and, and obviously would have done a great deal to do that. Uh, so as soon as the, the British get word that Bismarck is attempting to do this, they're, they're sending the full resources of their fleet to go after Bismarck to keep this from happening. And uh, the first to, to really encounter Bismarck uh, famously, of course, is the Hood. Uh, and I think, was it the Prince of Wales that was with the, the Hood? And uh, Prin Prince Eugen was the, the ship that was escorting Bismarck. And Hood gets nailed by that perfect hit that uh, caused that aft magazine to explode. Destroys the Hood, only three survivors out of like 1,400 men on board. Prince Eugen actually has, well, these two are kind of colliding here, has somebody filming while this is going on from the Prince Eugen. And so there's actually a uh, very crude video uh, recording of the explosion on board the Hood. Of course, Bismarck uh, does take some damage here and there. Uh, a torpedo hits from a British aircraft carrier. Um, trying to remember, I think it was uh, what was the aircraft carrier that hit it first? It, it was a, it was a torpedo that hit kind of in midships. Didn't do a lot of damage, uh, but it was the Ark Royal who launched the the plane that that really did Bismarck in by hitting the rudder and causing Bismarck not to be able to maneuver properly, which then allowed that final battle uh, where you have the uh, those several ships of the British coming in, the um, King George V, I think it was. I'm doing this all from memory while I'm trying to, uh, to play the game at the same time. HMS Victorious was the ship I was trying to think of that had the first torpedo hit that didn't really do a whole lot to Bismarck. Bismarck had taken some damage in that earlier fight and caused some flooding, but nothing real major. Trying to try to get the angle over here a little bit more so we can get all these. King George V, the Rodney. The Norfolk, the Dorsetshire, were all part of that the final battle. But you can imagine that that must have just been devastating to the uh, to the morale of the German Navy. This this pride of their Navy, first mission out, gets taken down. Although obviously it was a great blow to the British to lose Hood, even though Hood was a much older ship. Um, certainly a lot of pride in that ship as well. Alright, we're not causing a lot of damage with that. Let's go after the, I want to go after this cruiser. And I, I you know, a lot, we've been talking a lot uh, lately about speed and how speed affects accuracy, so let's start slowing down and watch and see. Obviously the more we fire, the better accuracy we get as well but I'm gonna go down to 24 knots and see right now we're at 11 percent fire 
again, see if it gets better. Doesn't look like it did that time. Nice hit though. Down to 14% now. Let's slow down a little bit more, down to 18 knots. In range for the 102s now. Not that they'll have much success. get much closer than this. I'm going to go ahead and start turning around. Or at least turn away. Up to 25% chance to hit now. Now we got all that smoke. Should be a kill? Oh, I thought it would be. Not quite. Percentage on this one, 50%. So one of the one of the most significant hits on the Bismarck during that final battle was by the Rodney. Rodney had these 16-inch guns, and uh, nine or two in the morning, Rodney hit Bismarck's forward superstructure with a 16-inch shell, which killed hundreds of men in one shot. Probably killed most of the staff on the bridge as well. Another shell from that same salvo hit the forward main battery. But Bismarck didn't really land any any major hits during that battle. We're at eighty three percent now to, to hit. Hundred percent now. damage at the moment. Let's switch over to high explosives, see what happens. Might have already been what we were firing. Oh, 
Oh, there's some big hits. sit tight with the direction I'm going right now. Seems to be working. him. There we go. How are we on distance right now? We're 14.8 kilometers, right? 83% percentage to hit, so I'm pretty content to stay right where we are. And then I can swing around and go after those smaller ships once I've dispatched this battleship. Now we're 98%. From this distance, I don't know about the HE. Decent hit there, penetration. We're steaming away from each other, though. I might swing around and go after him. doing a lot of damage though. You can see he's only at 5.7% chance to hit on me. I'm down to 61%. And he is running away. Go ahead and speed things up until we get turned around. down to 45%. Which is still way better than he can do to me. Long way to go to take him out. Though. So 
See how quickly we can zero in on this guy. So far, not so good. Two and a half percent. I was probably better off continuing to fire on his battleship. We'll go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Let's go for the cruiser. We'll let the uh, let the smaller guns go after the destroyers for now. Oh, there's a big hit right off the bat on the cruiser. And we're already at 22% chance to hit there. Ninety-seven now. Or now it's his chance to hit me. So we got these three destroyers. We got that battleship that was down to about half. I don't think we need to take that to win, though. Nice. We're still only at 24%. Landing some nice hits, though. One more might do it. Let's watch those come in. Finish him off. Is this the one? Not if we don't hit. Still at 
goodness. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Look at that San Giorgio go. Can't believe this thing's still floating. Alright, let's speed things along till we watch this one die. There we go. What's the next target? Looks like we're gonna go for a destroyer now. That doesn't seem like good odds. We're gonna go after the Aurora. We're gonna speed up so we can start catching up to some of these other ships. Aurora's way out there, 22 kilometers, but we've got a decent decent firing solution already, 19%. We'll go ahead and speed up. Nice start. Up to 21%. Oh, we got a couple of bouncers there. Ah. There we go. Just after I go off of it. Might not take much more to finish Aurora off. So close, so close. Down to just 266 shells, so we've got to be careful. We got plenty of the smaller stuff, though, to be able to take out those destroyers. Come on. Just bouncing off now. Because everything's already damaged. Just need one more hit in just the right place. Here it comes. This is the one. Ah! Still at 1%. Good night. Thank you. On to the destroyers. This is where it's going to get tricky. We only have a 3% chance to hit here. Oh, hey, look at that. I think we just got really lucky on that one. All right, let's save some of this ammo till we get a little closer. Not that we're gonna get closer to destroyers. If they can go 40 knots. Seventeen point three kilometers out. Might have to just go ahead and fire. Just hope we get lucky. 
Only got to land one or two hits. Boom, nice. That's what we need. One point three percent chance to hit here. This is going to be interesting. We'll just keep on going at this speed because uh, otherwise it's going to get a little boring. And he's running away faster and faster. Oh, we came close there. Boom. Nice hit. Just And that's it. That's all I needed to win. All right, let me know your thoughts. Let's talk about historically the Bismarck and the Turpets. Let's talk about that battle. And... Uh, We'll come back with some more this weekend. Hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a like. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.